Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge. Today is the 4th of July. Um, it's mid-morning right now. Uh, Maya is about finishing up with the farm chores. He may already be like playing with the kids. And I've already started in the kitchen. I kind of have something of traditions on the 4th of things that I always make and it typically has to do with how the garden's coming on. But usually the 4th of July is when I make our first really big batch of roasted salsa. I have this recipe up on my blog if you have never made it before. I came up with this recipe a long time ago before I actually gardened and I was buying store-bought tomatoes and I was trying to make fresh salsa with fresh tomatoes but that were bought from the store that actually had some flavor because unfortunately as we know store-bought tomatoes taste like disappointment <laughs> and they a lot of times are very bland because they're picked unripe and shipped from far away so I roasted them to bring out the flavors now doing it with homegrown tomatoes it's intensely flavorful very good and it allows you to make something like salsa with big heirlooms slicers which often have a lot of moisture in them so if you make salsa from these directly it can be a little watery so by roasting these we're going to actually remove some of the moisture and concentrate the sugar and add layers of sweet flavor i've got to throw some onions on this tray and i need to go pick some peppers out of the garden which is why i turned the camera on because i can bring you guys with me i'm not yet made a really big pepper harvest I ran out last night and grabbed this variety of sweet peppers. Now these are like smallish bell peppers, multiple different kinds. Maya was cooking dirty rice and he needed peppers for it. So I just got him a variety and obviously didn't use all of them. But I'm not 100% sure what I have in terms of hot peppers, but we're just gonna go find what, what I've got and that's what we will use. Typically I like to make salsa with serranos, but I don't know if I'll have any of those. And I'm just gonna take this bowl out. Actually, I'm gonna take two bowls because I'm gonna get cherry tomatoes also and make like a, a quick summer salad with cherry tomatoes and onions and cucumbers and some vinegar dressing. Either one of the fish pepper plants got mixed up, which we'll wait and see, or I've got a variegated jalapeno here, which once it starts setting fruit, it's got one, but I'm not 100% sure. It looks very jalapeno, but it's maybe a little too pointy on the end. So we'll just have to see what other fruit comes out of this. But if it ends up that this is a variegated jalapeno, I'll isolate the blossoms. I'll put a little bag over it to make sure that it doesn't cross pollinate with another plant. And uh, once the fruit is set, I will save the seeds from the fruit that came from the isolated blossoms. See if maybe we could make this a thing. That's pretty cool, huh? In other news, these plants are loaded. I didn't realize I had this many happening here. So the variety of jalapeno I like the most is this Craig's Grande. They get even bigger than this, but I mean, look at the size of these things. They're really huge and they're great for stuffing. Um, I like to cut them in half and of course stuff them with like cheese or something, wrap with bacon. The crown cherries are getting really big. I would like to take Jeremiah some of these. We're so close, but not no real fruit yet. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pick a bowl of these shishitos as well. And we will blister some with some aioli sauce today for an appetizer while everybody's waiting on food. Well, 
I would call that a pretty substantial pepper harvest. What do you guys think? I'll just put our cherry tomatoes on top of these. <laughs> the only cucumbers I have so far this year are the ones off this pitiful uh, little volunteer plant. Stuff like this that gives me so much confidence in the garden. <laughs> Volunteers just keep saying to me as they pop up and give me food when my actual efforts fail, whenever I'm trying to grow cucumbers and pill bugs keep eating them back. I come out and get all this food from what grew completely outside my effort. It's just that loud and constant reminder, even though there may be bad years, ultimately the process just works. I made a video five years ago today on the 4th of July, harvesting the very same things. <laughs> And on that day, I harvested my largest tomato of the year in that video. And this has been ripening unevenly. This is from a fused blossom, so technically this is multiple tomatoes growing together. And I think I may cut this off today. <laughs> there it is. I've been watching this monster for the last several weeks. Um, and you can see it's like very ripe on this side, less so over here, so I'll just have to let it sit in the house, but I feel better about letting it finish. When they're unevenly ripening, I kind of like to let them finish in the house just because when you get a part that's like super ripe, it's I think it spoils faster outside, so we'll weigh this when we get inside. You know, I think about shooting that video five years ago, doing much the same things. At that time, we were getting ready to go next door for our family get together at Maya's mom's house. And of course she's gone now. And that's kind of what I love about the garden. It's this kind of consistent cyclical memory and tradition that goes through time and kind of makes you go back and go, I remember when I picked that tomato. I remember when I first made that recipe out of the garden. I don't know, a lot can change in five years and some things just stay the same. And there's like a lot of comfort in that. All right, so I'm gonna go down and fin fill up the rest of this bowl with cherry tomatoes. Got all different varieties here. Check that out. Also very picturesque. It's the time of year if I don't set my camera up to time lapse in the shade, it overheats and you see nothing. Y'all. You know, Every time this time of year comes around, when it gets to where I'm harvesting five gallon buckets full of cherry tomatoes. I like to remember back when I used to move my grocery budget around so I could afford to buy one of the little blister packs of cherry tomatoes from the store. And I couldn't buy more than that because they were kind of a treat because they were kind of expensive. And every time I see a big cherry tomato harvest, I think about that. I think about one being such a treat and I feel cherry tomato rich. Oh, I just see something else. This is a season first. Will told me that these had come on. I just hadn't noticed it. As soon as the okra comes on, you got to start um, harvesting it at least every day. And then it gets to where you have to harvest it twice a day because it grows so fast. Mm. So it's later in the day and I just wanted to catch you up on my kitchen happenings. So this is some cat head biscuits I made for brunch for my kids. That's chocolate gravy. That's a southern thing right there if you've never heard of chocolate gravy. I haven't made it in a couple years, but my kids brought it up recently. I used to cook a lot more stuff like that. We don't eat a lot of stuff like that now. Here's my roasted salsa right here. So that's going to go through the food processor with cilantro. These are buns for, um, we're doing pulled pork sandwiches today. So oh, that's what's going on there. Obviously I make a royal mess while I'm cooking. <laughs> this is my salad. It's just equal parts chopped up, cucumbers and tomatoes, and then like a half part chopped onions, and then vinegar, oil, and some, I put some maple in this to sweeten it a little bit. I don't really have a recipe for this. It's more just kind of to taste. Here's some basil teas. I forgot, gotta weigh the tomato. Other thing I did was get bread started in the bread maker, but that's just, that's not 4th of July stuff. That's just because kids need bread for sandwiches. All right. 
two pounds, one ounce. Pretty big. I feel pretty confident that this is going to be the biggest one. As far as what's currently out there, that's green. Now I've got more tomato plants that are setting fruit that I haven't really started to grow big yet, so it could get surpassed. There's a really big Abe Lincoln out there that may end up weighing more than this, but a little over two pounds. What's your biggest tomato this year? Or let's let me ask, because a lot of you are not even getting fruit yet. But what's what's the biggest tomato you've ever harvested? My largest of all my gardening time was like right over three pounds. It was huge. And that one was actually a, a pineapple tomato that got that big. Well, I'm going to get back to this and put this video up for you guys. I will put links to um, recipes on the blog if you're wanting to know about like salsa. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.